this is a region that is marked by very wide inequalities. That is a fact. And yes, inequalities <clears throat> cutting across race, cutting across gender, cutting across uh, income disparities. But tremendous work has also been going on to bridge those inequalities. Within the area of gender inequalities, <clears throat> this region has been making tremendous progress in terms of reducing the differences between boys and girls at the education level, for example. In fact, in some countries, equality has been attained for girls and boys at all levels of education, including the university level. However, the challenge is how to transfer those skills that young women have got into economic opportunity in the market. So there are still many obstacles in the market that prevent women from having equal opportunity and having long and rewarding careers. These stem mainly from the failure of the, or the lack of public policies that can help women to balance a life as a mother and a family member and a life as an employee in the market. If the region makes more progress in terms of policies that improve, for example, childcare, mm -hmm. transportation, to enable a woman to juggle between having children and having a job, if policies are found in the workplace for flexible time, for example, for rewarding parents for going away to look after children and to return, both men and women employees, such policies will improve the op economic opportunities of women. That is one major challenge. The other major challenge that this region faces is inclusion of certain categories of women. All women are not the same. Their opportunities are not the same. Women of indigenous descent, women of Afro-Caribbean descent, African descent, these women suffer more exclusion than other women. So there is a challenge of addressing the diverse situations of women. That is a, a challenge of the region. Another important challenge is that of security of women. Femicide. Domestic, levels of domestic violence, levels of violence against women in the workplace are still very high. And it is very important for the countries of the region to address this challenge. Well, what we have as a global gender equality policy is really a menu that looks at gender equality issues across the four focus areas. Democratic governance, crisis prevention and recovery, poverty eradication and MDG achievement, <clears throat> and energy and environment. Now, because it is a global menu, each region then takes out what is most important for its region. And indeed, in this region, I have seen that a lot of work has been done, for example, in the area of promoting women's political participation. In the field of democratic governance, your region has made that a key priority, women's political participation. There's also some very, very interesting and strong work to do with addressing issues of gender-based violence. <clears throat> and this is very interesting because different countries are approaching it in different ways. Some are strengthening the judiciary in terms of how judges address problems of violence that come before them. Others are looking at stronger legislation and implementation of laws. Others are working with police institutions mm -hmm. to see that the law and order function addresses violence more comprehensively, and so on. <clears throat> we are also seeing this region working very, very much on public policies to reconcile work and life. Okay. And this, in this, in this case,
case, this region has innovated and its innovations are now being shared with other regions. The gender equality seal is one example of private sector policies mm -hmm. that can actually improve the workplace and make it possible for women to have a career and also manage their life at home. And these policies are now are, are fueled by a peer competition that it is not imposed from public policy. It's not they are not imposed by the government, but companies opt to have them <clears throat> and make them part of their strategy for competitiveness. This is very interesting and it's also being shared, we are sharing it with other regions. This region has also prioritized um, in terms of uh, gender equality, the issues of gender and addressing gender dimensions of climate change. We are seeing more countries interested in looking at how adaptation policies address both issues of men and women in uh, environmental sustainability. We look, they're looking at how to make proposals for climate financing that address the needs of men and women, and so on. This is also an increasing priority. This region, Latin America Caribbean region, has been addressing the intersections of disaster risk reduction and recovery with climate change and looking at the gender dimensions there. This is also an area where this region is leading within UNDP and there are lessons to learn from here to other regions. That is a very important point. As you know, <clears throat> we in UNDP are undergoing a change process. Mm -hmm. And within that, <clears throat> we have to look very carefully at what is our additionality within the UN system on issues of gender equality. This is an important question for us. <clears throat> UN Women has a very specific mandate. Mm -hmm. It is the lead on gender issues at a country level. It is the lead on gender equality system globally within the UN system. It is responsible for accountability of every part of the UN system for gender mainstreaming. It is responsible for coordination of gender mainstreaming work at the national level, at the regional level, and at the global level. So it is our leader. But it does not take away our own responsibility as UNDP to mainstream gender systematically across all our work. So we have to work with UN women in and lend our entire infrastructure of 166 country offices of development practitioners in a broad range of areas of development to working on gender issues together with UN Women. So where UN Women has innovated, it is incumbent on us to take their innovation and spread it in our network of development country offices. <clears throat> Where we have innovated, we continue sharing those innovations globally. We do not stop our work. What we have to do is to take what UN Women has and use it more in our system and also to share what we have so that UN Women can share it with other UN agencies. One can see something very positive, but that is also fragile, mm -hmm. that needs support for it to grow. What do you see? You see young people coming out on the streets and demanding inclusion, not only in governance, but also in the economy. They want a job and they want a voice. It's a very secular demand. It is not being pushed by political parties, it's not being pushed by religious organizations, it's just young people demanding a voice and a job. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to support this demand to come to realization. 
Now, some of the dictatorships have crumbled, but that vacuum quickly gets filled from past experience and from what we are seeing now, both in Tunisia and Egypt, that that gap can be quickly filled by the old traditional forces only in different permutations. <coughs> in Egypt, there's a military that is now running the state. So it's now so important for us to support these as the aspirations of these young people who brought about the change, to help them to help to ensure that the space for dialogue includes them, to ensure that their voices are heard, that they are capable of articulating their demands for a new democracy well enough. So <clears throat> true, the examples from Latin America can be very helpful. And this is our strength as UNDP. We have documented much of this. We have knowledge of how it happened. We have networks of the people who made it happen. So we have resources to support the transitions in these countries, and I hope we can use them. My team is looking at how best we can support the change and the inclusion of the demands of women in these mm -hmm. countries. It, we will be interested to know from Latin America what we can take there. Let me give you, for example, I've been so inspired to see on Twitter women in Saudi Arabia fighting for the right, their right to drive a car yeah. and tweeting between themselves yeah. and fighting around the law that prevents them from participating in elections and going to vote and tweeting to each other saying, I just made it, I registered and I voted <clears throat> and so on. We can support these processes. We can support women's rights in these transitions and learn so much from what has happened in your countries here.